sound coming out of your DJ rig, you've got your sound coming out of your mixer, from got no other input plugged in at this point. I can, of course, have the input. You could be singing. In fact, if I plug that also back in, we should be able to experience. See, it's working. It's working straight away. So is what makes this a genius little box. Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today, I'm looking at the IK Multimedia iRig Stream. The iRig Stream is a little tiny box that could massively upgrade your live streaming and social media posting game. Now, what I wanted it for was to improve upon my Instagram clips. I like to take little video clips of my uh, bubbling and bleeping on my modular and bits and pieces like that. And I've been frustrated, shall we say, by the quality of the audio that gets pumped in through my iPhone. And so I was looking for a way of improving upon that with the minimum amount of fuss. I mean, I can improve upon it. I can use this camera. I can use proper audio equipment and root stuff out, stick it into the computer, put it in some software, mix it down, add some effects, chop it down into a little you know, one minute bite sized thing, upload it to me thing, download it to my phone and then upload that to Instagram. Then I have something wonderful, but that's a bit of a faff. And so in my search to improve upon that, I came upon this little fella and this I think could well be the answer because essentially it took my Instagram videos from this and turned them into this. Because let's face it, the microphone on a little phone like this it's all right for making phone calls, but it's a bit crummy when it comes to recording music or producing some kind of live stream that you want to be more than just a chat to camera. And so anything that can improve upon that is a good thing. Now there's lots of hardware out with which you can do that. There's all sorts of audio interfaces and bits and pieces like, you know, audio interface like this or a big, you know, lots of expensive gear you can plumb into the whole experience in order to increase the audio quality. But what I wanted was something just simple enough to drop in because you can't get much simpler than a phone just pressing record and going that's awesome the simplicity of that is always something which should not be underestimated because as soon as you try to do something better than that it gets complicated really quickly however with the iRig stream so it seems it's not so complicated you can drop it in there with a minimum amount of fuss and it massively improves upon the sound quality that all the people watching are going to receive and once I started playing with it, I realized that there's actually a whole load of other applications that would be perfect for this. And particularly at this time when there are so many people getting out there doing a little bit of live streaming. Can't get to your bowls club? No problem, let's do a live stream of it. No longer go to your martial arts club? No problem, we'll live stream. Can't get to church anymore? We'll live stream it. So everybody's out there live streaming. And many people are doing it just on their phones. But with something like this, you could take that to the next step, the next level, and perhaps make the experience a whole lot better for your viewers. So that's what I'm looking at today. Now IK Multimedia sent this to me. I asked them for one and they sent it to me, which is really nice of them. But other than supplying me with the gear, they haven't sponsored this post or anything. So this is going to be a review of this, what I think about it, but also a, a demonstration of what it can do and the sort of scenarios in which it might work. So I figure I could just tell you what it does and then the video will be over in a couple of minutes or I could just try to demonstrate it doing what it can do. And I think personally, I find that a better way of explaining something. So what does it do then? Well, very simply, what it does is that it takes your audio signal, the sound or music, or whatever it is you're creating, plums it directly into here and sends it over the internet through your phone, through your laptop, through whatever device you've got it plugged into. It's purely giving you an opportunity to plug your sound, your music, whatever it is you're creating directly in rather than taking it in through the microphone on your phone. But it's got more than that. First of all, it's got a dial on the front so you can actually adjust the level so you can get that a bit right. It has a loopback function, which we will look at in a bit. But probably most interesting, what it is that makes this such a versatile little device is that it has this side input here which takes both the headphones and a microphone 
And that essentially means that you've got a main input going in here with sound in, and you can add a microphone over the top while listening to it all back. And it's that, as I'm going to demonstrate to you hopefully, is what makes this a genius little box. So let me give you my first scenario, which was the Instagram clip scenario, which is the thing that I actually want it for and the thing I'm going to be using it for. So previously I take my phone, I point my phone at my stuff, I go to Instagram and it records. That's it. Sound goes in through the microphone at the bottom. That's your lot. So let me show you how easy it is or how complicated, depending on which way you look at it, to plug this in and do exactly the same thing. So first of all, I plug the required cable in the end here. Now it comes with a cable for an iPhone, comes with a cable for an Android phone, and it also comes with a USB cable. So it can plug into any kind of phone, plus your laptop, or your laptop, I suppose, and that provides the connection. Now it gets power directly from your phone, which is unusual. You often find that with larger audio interfaces, uh, this sort of thing, that they can't be powered by the actual phone device. Laptops, yeah, no problem. That's regular USB power. That's fine. But plugging into a phone, you rarely have the situation where it's actually powered by that device. Now, that's awesome because I can just plug it in and it's going to work. The downside being that it's going to suck the battery power out of my phone. Now, you can power it. It does have a little DC input on the side here. You can buy an optional power supply to power this, which will also charge your phone, which is a brilliant idea if you're going to do very long live streams. However, what it won't do is work through one of these little adapters, which splits off your lightning to two lightnings to have like audio and charging. I did try that out, but it just doesn't seem to work. It doesn't recognize the interface through an adapter like this. So that's of no use whatsoever. And so to get this working, all I do is plug this into here. I can start up some iRig recorder software if I'm just going to record directly to the phone rather than live streaming, which is what the plan is at the moment. I take the output of what it is I want to stick in it. So at the moment it's this. This is coming directly from my modular. That's the sound that I want to capture. So what I do is I plug that sound into here. So I'm just taking the output of my machine, my device, my modular here, which then goes into these two phono cables. Now you may have to buy a cable. You may have to buy an adapter. Who knows? Just get the appropriate cable. Audio cables are all interchangeable. You just have one at one end and one at the other as to what you plug in to, to plug in, yeah? So you get your phono cable that's coming out of your device you want to make sound and you plug that in. Now getting a light on the front to tell me that I've got a good level, I can turn that up on the device here or turn it down or turn it up and down at the source just to get the right sort of level. Now we can't hear anything at the moment because the sound is going in here now rather than to my speakers. But the sound is also coming out of the side. Now we can see on our little screen here that I'm getting input level into the software. So if I take the cable that was plugged into the output of here, I can then plug that in the side, again with the right sort of adapter on the end. And that's it. So all I've done is taken the output of my machine, plugged it into the iRig stream, taking the headphone output here, back again so I can hear it. So I've literally dropped this box into the signal chain. Yeah? So rather than recording speakers from the phone as I was previously, I've now got proper high quality input through the iRig stream going directly into my phone. And now from my phone, I can stream this live on Facebook, I can capture a little bit into Instagram, or whatever the heck I like. It's easy. Now hopefully you can see that it doesn't have to be a modular synthesizer. It could be the output of anything that I could plug in here. Anything that you want to Instagram which has sound, you can plug it into this and get a much better quality of sound than you would using the onboard microphone. You could have a whole rig of synthesizers that you're playing, just take your mixer output and plug it directly in here. Just drop it in there, in between. You're doing a DJ set, you've got your decks or whatever set up, just take an output from your mixer, 
plug it into here and then you're streaming live over the internet without having to deal with the inbuilt microphone on a phone or a laptop. Can you see how jolly easy that is? But we're not done yet, not by a long chalk, because this input here on the side is the same as you'd get on an older phone. You know, not this lightning business where you have to get crazy adapters. This is a headphone headset and microphone combo jack, also known as a TRRS, I think, tip ring ring sleeve. And what that means is that you can have a microphone going in here as well. At the moment, I've just got purely an output. But with the power of a little adapter, like this, see, tip ring ring sleeve, that's what that's about. That splits out into headphone output and microphone input. I can plug that into the side. I can plug my output, as I was before, the headphone output, into there. Then I can plug a microphone into this other bit here. In this case, a little tie clip microphone. Da -da, ba -ba 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 -ba. And this signal attached to me here would be mixed in with the audio. So if you imagine the scenario now, you've got the sound coming out of your device, you've got the sound coming out of your DJ rig, you've got your sound coming out of your mixer from your big performance you've got with all these weird electronic drums. You can now speak over the top without having to have a complicated microphone set up going through a mixer kind of business. You can just have it side chained almost into the side just like this. It's brilliant. It's totally brilliant. So you could imagine perhaps that you could be a DJ playing your records and speaking to your crowd. You could be running a yoga club where you've got music that you're playing for everyone to, to do their moves alongside to and you can give instructions over the top. You could be a dance teacher. You could be painting with music in the background. You could be trying to teach something or commenting on something. You could be a vicar or a pastor uh, leading your church with background music going on that's going to be of a decent quality rather than it all just going through your phone. And all of this into a little box without having to deal with big mixers or other bits of expensive equipment. You've just got it all sorted out just with this. It's all running off the battery of the mobile phone, so you can do it in your back garden, you can do it anywhere you like, you know, with the correct amount of social distancing. And that's what's genius about this little box is that it's so flipping versatile. You could run anything into it. So here's a couple more examples, right? You don't have a tie clip mic, don't worry about it. You've got something like this. Do you have something like this? <laughs> so with this, right, you've got a gaming headset. Gaming headset might have the right TRRS plug on the side, and I can plug that right in. And now I've got the music coming through. I've got my voice coming through here. I could be game streaming or something. I don't know. Or even simpler than that, if you've got earbuds that also have a microphone built in for answering calls, then that is going to work in this situation as well. Not quite as cumbersome as the gaming headset. IK Multimedia do a microphone designed exactly and specifically for this application. It's called the iRig Mic as a microphone. But on the end, it has, again, the TRRS bit to plug directly in the side, plus an additional port for your headphones or you're monitoring or whatever it is you're using to listen to it. So I'm now listening through, turn the microphone on and I can speak directly to my crowd, to my people on a microphone. Hey, big up to you out there. How's it going? Wake your hands again. You know, that kind of thing as you, as you can imagine. You know, I can set this up on a stand. I can start doing karaoke or perhaps uh, if you're leading worship again, you could be singing into this while I've got the background music going on and leading the worship that way. Now in my description so far, I've just been talking about taking the output of your device that's making sound. So it could be a synthesizer, it could be a mixer, it could be an MP3 player, it could be another phone, it could be a laptop, it could be a cassette machine, it could be whatever you like that's making sound and plugging that in the side. Now we could take this a little step 
further out, just slightly bigger, slightly more ambitious, and start using something like a mixer. How would we put that in? What would that mean exactly? Well, let me show you. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to show you these things. You can use a little mixer to set up the sounds. You can have a proper microphone going into here, like a condenser microphone, and your guitar going into here. Mix that correctly, take the output of your mixer, and plug that into the iRig. So now, just knock that down a little bit. See, guitar, got a guitar, got a proper microphone, going into my mixer, the output of the mixer, going into the iRig stream, going into the phone, going out over the internet. So while the other person is, is talking to the crowd, is is doing the thing, you know, preaching, whatever is going on, you could be singing. In the background. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Or, you know, whatever. Whatever it is that you're doing, you can plug it into here and into there. In fact, you can also take the output of your other stuff, plug that into the mixer. So you can see how easily and quickly you can get more complicated and more interesting and more versatile because you can plug whatever you like in here. I mean, one of the applications I've seen in a video for the iRig stream is to record gigs. You know, you take the output or some kind of output out of the live desk, you know, the huge desk, plug it into this, and now you can do a quick live stream of an entire gig with decent sound rather than crappy crowd sound and you've actually got sound coming off the desk brilliant and so that's another potential use scenario for this little box so are you looking at this thinking oh what so I, I need a mixer now no 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 let's just rewind this is a this is a possibility where you could take it if you have more sources if there's more than one person if you need more things plugged in there's absolutely no reason why you can't have an entire shed full of gear all going through a mixer and just take a single output to the iRig stream in order to live stream with it just do that that's fine but you don't have to have any of that gear see the mixer is just a possibility it's just a suggestion it's just one of the many things that you can do with this little box when actually all you need is the output of the sound that you want to hear plugged into here microphone in the side and you're off you're off and running there was one other scenario that occurred to me as i was messing about with this and that is how about if you want to play music from the device that you're live streaming from because, you know, let's face it, who has a cassette player these days that they could plug into this while they're streaming on their iPhone? Hmm. I don't know, because all your music is on your device. Now, I couldn't actually get this to work on the iPhone, so I've gone to my Surface, my laptop, if you like, it's just a laptop, and I've plugged the iRig stream in via USB. Now, on a computer, it's very easy to run multiple applications at once. In fact, most of them can use the same audio driver. So you can have music playing back while you're fiddling about with something else. That's very common. But in order to stream music from your laptop over something like Facebook Live while using the same laptop, you would have to sort of route the output back into the input again. And that can be something that's quite difficult to do on a regular computer. But thankfully, it's not a problem for the iRig stream because it has this little switch on the side that says loopback. What loopback does, it takes the output of your computer, your laptop, and routes it virtually or through this box back into the input and mixes it in, which means that the sound that you're making on your laptop will also go out over your live stream. So again, if you're running your meeting, your service or whatever off your laptop, you can just play the music on there and it will also go out over the live stream. It's brilliant. It's totally brilliant. I tried to do this on the iPhone. I couldn't work out how to do it. I don't even know if it can do it because whenever I activated Facebook Live, it seemed to cut off any music that I was playing, not giving me the opportunity to try the loop back out. Whereas on a PC, on a, on a laptop, you can do that sort of thing all the time. I have lots of different things playing different things all at once. Let me attempt to demonstrate that. So at the moment, I've got Ableton Live open, for instance, because it may well be that you want to do a live performance using something like uh, Ableton on the same computer that you want to live stream from. 
that makes sense. So within Over to Live, I've got this song playing back. And I want to send that out over my live stream. I've got no other input plugged in at this point. I can, of course, have the input from something else, some other device also plugged into here. From my mixer, I can play guitar alongside. Whatever I like, I can also plug into here. But at this moment, I just want to concentrate on what's coming out of here. So this is Facebook Live ready to go live. I've got Ableton Live playing back. And all I need to do is on the side, turn on the loop back. Now the volume seems to drop at that point because it's going to be mixed with whatever is coming in here as well as well as the microphone level. So you might want to adjust the level in your software just to get that balance about right. And then when you go live, you'll have the music from your machine as well as your voice, as well as the output from your other thing as well. All going at once together. But if I plug that also back in, we should be able to experience that. Now these two things aren't synchronized together, so you know it's not making a really lovely sound or anything. But currently I've got the output from this going through here. I've got the output from Ableton Live being looped back through the same device, plus my tie clip mic, all at the same time, all going through, all being pumped out right now, in fact, live over Facebook. That's that's pretty that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But of course, it doesn't have to be anything as posh as running Ableton Live and trying to do a mix live. It could just be an audio file, a song, the output from a YouTube video, anything that, of course, is not in any way copyright protected. You can mix in through this loopback function straight back out onto the Internet. Fabulous. One little snag that I wanted to point out that I ran into when attempting to do Facebook live streams from my laptop and then using the music from the laptop to loop back and out again is that there are some sample rate issues. Let me try to explain. When you plug in something like the iRig Stream or any simple audio interface that uses just regular Windows drivers, it tends to default to 48 kilohertz as the standard sample rate. Why? Anybody's guess, but onboard sound tends to be at 48k. Now, Facebook Live, so it seems, responds to 44.1k. So if you're playing music at 48 and you're trying to pump it down a system which is 44.1, either it kind of won't work or it will all have to be slowed down in order to accommodate it and you come across sounding like some kind of crazy person. So let me demonstrate that. So rather than using Ableton Live as I did a moment ago, this is just playing a piece of music in Groove Music, yeah? And then gonna open up Facebook and I'm going to create another live stream post and see if you can hear what happens to the audio. Do you hear that? <laughs> so in the flip between 48k and 44.1k, it has been completely slowed down. It's been trashed. My audio has been trashed, which is no good. You're trying to do good audio. That's the whole point. And that's now been killed by this process. So let me show you how to fix that. So go into the audio settings. So right click the speaker icon down in the bottom corner. Go to open sound settings. Bring you in a little bit closer on that. It has for the output the iRig stream. You want to select device properties additional device properties over here on the right and that'll bring up the old school speaker properties window for that you want to go to advanced and then you've got a default format you want to bring that drop down menu down and select 24 bit 44 100 hertz 44.1 do that click apply hit ok close all those bits down run your music again Still sounds perfect, as it should do. Open up Facebook. This time when you start your live stream, 
it shouldn't do that drop. See, it's right, it's the same. So it hasn't screwed up the audio, so this time it should work. Now, obviously this is a brilliant way of DJing straight from your laptop. You just line up the music you wanna play, you route it through here, through the loop back button, and you are streaming over the internet. Of course, copyright allowing, and all those usual sorts of precautions. So is it really all that easy? Is that it? You just drop it in and it works? Is that it? Yeah, well, kinda. Let me show you exactly what happens. I mean, I'm, I'm not new to live streaming, but I live stream in a studio environment. I use a couple of cameras. I use very posh software over on my computer over there that I use to capture the video, to mix it together, to give me options to swipe between one thing and another. Decent sound going out, being captured by a sound card, plus a condenser microphone. That's my usual live stream rig, right? So I don't often live stream, just through a phone. So this whole experience of using the iRig Stream has been quite an eye opener. It's been very, very interesting. And one of the things it highlights to me is that things like iPhones and stuff, they're kind of a bit flaky. <laughs> it's not like using proper gear, no. But, you know, with a little bit of thought and patience, and once you've got the hang of it, oh, it is easy. It is easy. You've just got to kind of know what to expect, I suppose. So let me just quickly take you through the process. Let's throw myself live onto Facebook <laughs> again to see uh, to see what happens. I'm gonna use my stand because obviously I've got things sticking out the side of my phone. I'm gonna need it to be that way round, but that brings challenges in of itself. So, but let me just step through the process. So, phone in place, yep, yeah, that's good. Phone in place. So my iRig stream, I'm going to plug into here. Now, there's no driver installation or anything like that, not even on a laptop, it just all finds it and it works. Plug that in, you get power, but you don't tend to get sound going through. You only seem to get sound going through once you've activated a piece of software or an app that uses the sound. So, so far when I was showing it to you earlier, I had the iRig recorder software running. But let me show you what happens when you try to do a Facebook live stream. Turn this out so you can see that a bit better. So I've got my Lavalier mic plugged in. I've got that turned up this time. I've got the output going to my main speakers over there so that I can hear it. And I've got the output from my modular synth going directly into the bottom of that. All good to go. I've got no level, can hear nothing going through because it's not been activated by any app. So you plug it in, nothing happens, is what I'm saying. <laughs> That's never a good thing. But hey, that's what we've got to work with. So I'm gonna start her up, start up Facebook, press on live. Now, of course, at the moment, it doesn't really know what it's trying to do. Now, because my phone is sideways, Facebook doesn't really like that. And when you go onto Facebook Live, it does do the camera correctly, but these things are all on the side. So if I was to live stream now, it'd come out sideways. And we don't want that, we don't want that. So you have to go like that and then back again for it to sort itself out. Now, unfortunately, nothing's gonna happen until I press go. This is the most frustrating thing about live streaming on Facebook as my understanding of it. I mean, there may be ways to do this differently. I don't know. But my experience of plugging these two things together is this, that I, what you need to do is set it up beforehand in iRig Recorder, get the levels right, get what you want going on right, sort all that out, then go to Facebook because it's not actually going to go and you're not going to be able to hear anything until you press the button there. There you see, now I've got the sound going through. I'm just going to turn down my microphone a little bit. So now, because I've pressed go, I'm now live streaming out to, to the internet, to gazillions of people out there who are eager for my every word and every mention of something. And the iRig itself didn't start up until I pressed that button. So you just kind of throw yourself into it and off you go. 
So with a bit of luck, I should be getting sound coming in through the front end of the Ivory Stream. I've got sound coming from my microphone. Those two being mixed together over Facebook Live. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Rob, give us a wave. <laughs> and people can then watch you do your marvelous thing. And that's it. It was that simple. I mean, other than the hiccup of not being able to hear anything until you press go, it is relatively simple. And hopefully the quality of the audio that's coming from the modular and the quality of the audio going through the microphone is going to be a much better, higher experience than just using the iPhone microphone itself. <laughs> Look at that, I got three people. It's very exciting. Thanks everyone. Just doing a review. See you later. And when you're out, it stops. Now Instagram, I should add, is slightly different. Instagram does give you a preview. So if I get out of here, go to Instagram, add video. See, it's working. It's working straight away. So that's Instagram and I haven't pressed record yet but I'm already getting sound going through from both my microphone and from here. So in Instagram, you get a much better experience because you can preview it before you start. Facebook, jump straight in. Instagram, a little bit of preview, which is nice. So there you go, the iRig stream. There are other iRigs. There's ones that have got microphone preamps, ones that have got acoustic guitar inputs, electric guitar inputs. There's bigger ones that have got like twin bits and pieces in. But none of them, as far as I can tell, have this sneaky way of giving you a decent level stereo input plus a side microphone that's put over the top. It's that little combination, that little extra that really sets this apart because I can use it, plug it in, it's running off the power of the phone, I can plug the output of music that I want to put into it, over the internet, into it, and I can speak over the top. So whatever you're doing, whatever club you're running, whatever yoga class you're putting on, whatever piece of church you're doing, anything is going to work well through this. Background music, microphone over the top. Massive modular performance, a little bit of introduction over the top or just use that just plug a big mixer with your entire band straight into this straight over the internet bypassing that flipping microphone on your phone which gives that awful sound so now you have a much better way of doing that it's great i'm going to use this for all of my instagram videos from now on because it is easy enough easy enough the price on this is about 99 dollars so it's not exactly throwaway money, but to do something bigger and better than this, you'll be looking at a lot more money to get a lot more gear to achieve that. For the simplest way of getting your live streaming really upgraded to a much better quality of sound and mixing those two sounds together, then this I reckon is a pretty good bet. I've really enjoyed having it for these last couple of days and I've been boggling all of my Facebook friends with my live streams which has also been excellent. Now, if you have a particular scenario, if you're still boggled by something that I've said, then let me know in the comments. You know, perhaps I could do some more specific videos on exactly your scenario. Maybe that would be helpful. If you think that would be helpful, then do let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. But I'm always available to answer questions and to chat about whatever thoughts you've got on this particular product or anything else for that matter. So if that's been useful to you, please like, share and subscribe. If you're feeling particularly daring at these times, then join me on Patreon and throw me a few dollars and I'll do my best to create even more videos on amazing things. Do check out the YouTube channel for reviews on other bits of gear, other audio interfaces, MIDI interfaces, synthesizers, modular stuff, DIY, all sorts of things. Every month I do a roundup of all the music technology news and we finish that off with a proper live stream where you can come and we can chat about all the latest gear. Don't be afraid to get in touch. I'm nearly always available and in the meantime go and make some tunes. <laughs>